to my channel. I'm Nikki G with Sewing My Style. Today we're going to talk about ironing versus pressing. So I'm at my ironing board. I've got nice iron and I've got my jeans that I just took out of the wash and I've got them here and I am just finishing up ironing the creases in my jeans that I made some time ago. Okay. And that's what we're going to talk about. That was just ironing. Today we press, I'll put those away. Today we press. When we're making a garment, we press our gathers, we press our pleats, we press our darts down, and the main thing we press are our seams open. So that's what we're gonna talk about today, just best practices of pressing our garments so you can have a nice finished garment and different tips for uh, ironing to make your appearance really good, okay? Let's get started. First, let's talk about this iron. This is one of my favorites now, okay? It's the Aliso Home Iron. I've got a yellow one. You've seen pink and they've got some new colors coming out. So it just makes your ironing more fun to look at, if nothing else. The Aliso Iron is a heavy duty iron, I would consider. And one of the main things about it, I think there were first in this and this technology has got eye touch technology, okay? There's a button on the back. You can turn the eye touch or turn it, turn it on or turn it off. And when you put your hand down on it, it goes down. When you release, it comes up. So you are never doing this. You're never doing that. The iron is on, it's, it's full of water, so that's why it's steaming. But, so when you're pressing, you just put the iron to the side, and it comes up, put your iron down, and you just keep pressing over your garment. So it's really cool. This iron has nice settings. It goes all the way up to very hot linen, cotton. It's got three steam settings, a little, medium, or a lot, and it's got um, a water spray button. And here you can tell is the the water reservoir so you know you uh, keep the the water filled to the max you don't want to overfill your iron because iron I mean water could spill out onto your fabrics and you just want to make sure that your iron is doing its job okay so check out the Aliso it's one of my favorites now and I also have the travel version of the Aliso which is really cool so it's, it gets just as hot. It's got the steam buttons on the side. It's got a nice temperature dial here, but when I travel, it's a nice mini iron to uh, take with me. I also used this iron when I was mass making, you know, earlier this year, and it works perfectly because it gets fire hot. So it's a great mass maker. Okay. So let's talk about ironing tips. Um, know your fabrics. Okay, and get to know your synthetics versus your um, pure fabrics like cotton and linen. Cottons and linens love to be pressed. They can take nice heat. Those of you that are mass makers know cotton reacts very nicely to heat and steam, and so does linen. Silk is the same way. So the synthetic fabrics are the ones that you gotta get to know so that you don't, you can ruin fabrics, you can stretch them out. So first thing, trust the iron settings, okay? The iron has settings, you can see here. Oh, it's steaming. So it goes from warm, it may have the name. This particular iron has the name of fabric. It has synthetic, wool, silk, linen, and cotton. And so trust your iron settings first. Always go warm and then always use a um, pressing cloth. Uh, mine's gotten kind of dirty. Sometimes I cut a new one, but this is a regular cotton. It's a piece of muslin, but it's a regular cotton pressing cloth. I always use it. I always reach for it, no matter what the fabric is, because you never know what you're going to get if you, uh, if you don't use it. Okay. Um, press your fabrics on the wrong side. You don't want to risk having marks on your fabric, especially with the seams. When you're doing open, when you're opening your seams, you definitely want to press your fabrics on the right side, uh, wrong side. Sorry. Um, wools and corduroys do not like being pressed. 
Some blends, like a wool blend, may behave nicely if you press with a warm iron, particularly if you are just opening up the seams and never, ever, ever press velvet. If you guys know me, you know we got a history with velvet. Never press velvet. There's some other uh, techniques to make sure you've got good seams on your velvet. Okay, let's see what else. Um, yeah, let's talk about some best practice, best practices. Okay, your iron has three uh, properties. Heat, steam, and pressure movement, okay? So it's hot, steam comes out, and you're pressing and moving. The idea is never use all three at the same time. You may use two, okay? Um, let me show you. So what we'll review is opening a seam allowance, pressing gathers, pleats, and seams like darts, okay? All right, so you have a seam allowance that you're gonna open. You're, you, have, you have stitched it, and you're gonna open it. So here's the idea. Open your seam allowance. As you hold the iron, any iron, if you hover it, it will start to stain. And I'm just taking the tip of the iron. I'm gonna turn it this way so you can tell what's going on. Allow the iron to use the stain and take the tip of the iron and run it down the seam allowance. The tip is just as hot as the middle of the iron. It's the same heat. So just run it down. Middle, that's the tip. And you're allowing the steam to do its job because again, the steam is relaxing those fibers. So as the tip of the iron presses down, you got a nice seam there. Okay, if you wanna do that, that's fine too. Okay, the same thing with a dart. Okay, so we've stitched a dart and this is the wrong side. And I get the question all the time, which way do I press the dart down? Okay, if this was a blouse dart, I would press it down and I would just take the iron and lightly run over, just lightly. I'm never using the full weight of the iron whenever I'm pressing because I'm letting the heat and the steam do its own job. And here's pleats. So you've already stitched your pleats in place. You've already stitched them in place and just finger them in place just to make sure they're straight. And then lightly up down motion. Up down is best. Okay, and there's your pleats. Okay. And then gathers are the same way. All right, you've already gathered, pulled your threads, we went over gatherers and pleats in the uh, sewing terms and vocabulary. So once you get your gathers done, you just wanna press down, like press the edge of the iron down on the gathers, on the top of the gathers, because you don't want gathers to be pressed like pleats. So you just wanna press maybe on the top edge of the gathers so that they're kind of set. Again, an up-down motion. All right, so that's just some examples of how we want to use the iron. And of course, if you just need to steam this iron particularly, and most irons, if you hover, you'll get a good steam action and then up-down on any garment, particularly neck edges, uh, facings, armholes, that's where you can really ruin ruin your fabric if you're not careful with the heat and steam of the iron. Cool? As we finish up our ironing lesson for today, uh, just kind of review. This is my favorite iron. And uh, we are doing some giveaways on um, our Facebook and Instagram social media pages. So you want may wanna check out Sewing My Style. And 
These are just examples of things that are that that get pressed. Here's a bonnet. Okay, I was able to press those press the edges after I stitched them. Here's my scrunchie that I use. Of course, my denim does get ironed, less pressed and more ironed. And you know, here's an, another example of a nice fine cotton up down motions only just be very careful the important thing is you are in the middle of construction of a garment and ironing and press versus pressing can really ruin your garment before you're finished and i'm sure if you've had a lot of experience that has happened so good luck with your ironing and your pressing and if you have any questions just leave them below like and subscribe to this channel so you can um, get more tips and techniques on how to enhance your sewing journey bye see you next time